such an honor to be here among such inspiring speakers and in front of us such amazing audience. Thank you. And thank you, Dor, for giving me a voice and a hand when I felt like I was screaming from underwater. So I am a trans man. I am also a trans activist, a film director, sometimes a performer. I am tired and I am angry. And I haven't always been tired and angry. Actually, I was a very loved child. My childhood was perfect in a village in southwestern Romania, in my grandparents' house, who are both teachers. This is me with them when I was almost one year old. And I understand that being brought up with such love and nurture is the base of my emotional intelligence. I rely a lot on that. However, I was raised and socialized as a girl. And in that, my grandmother had a particular role. She was quite conservative, very religious. She had a hard life herself and had a few strong ideas on how a girl should be brought up. I was taught to be shy, obedient, shameful, at my place. And growing up like this, as a trans boy and later a trans man, left some traces, some pain. However, for a while, it was not such a burden, my trans identity. My family was really kind and fair. I had kind and fair people around me, so I rely a lot on that. Kindness and fairness are two major sides within my identity, within myself. Sides that I hope that I will never lose. However, puberty struck, and with that came pain. On one hand, because my body started to develop, in a way that I did not want. And on the other hand, because, you know, with puberty comes love. And you fall in love. And you fall in love as a boy named Patrick. And the people who also fall in love with you expect to be in love with a boy named Patrick. That was the truth. But back then, like 17 years ago, that was a hard pill to swallow. I was confronted with the fact that I might not be Patrick because my body didn't say so. It was then that I learned that I was inferior, an inferior race. This is when dysphoria and depression started. I wanted to be anything else except myself, a rat, a hole in the ground, anything but not myself. I felt like I was not worthy to be among the other people. But I owe it to myself to try my best to become who I actually felt I was. And in front of me, there were only two options. I succeed or I die. I was shy and obedient and shameful for a lot of time. And I thought in my naivety that there must be someone somewhere to help me transition, to proper give me assistance, medical assistance, to go on this journey in safety. As years went by, I felt like living in a cage, and that cage became smaller and smaller, and it was pressing on my bones on in every cell of my body. Air became unbreathable. It took me 12 years to start transition, but I didn't start it with support. I started it on my own with testosterone bought illegally, Six years later, I still buy it illegally off the black market because we cannot find it in pharmacies around the country. The whole community of trans boys and men who use testosterone have to go on websites and buy testosterone, which is often counterfeit. Our health is at risk. This is why I chose to become an activist. And I understood then 
that the best way to challenge mentalities was to tell my story with openness, honesty, full disclosure. For so long, I lived hiding my identity. Not only that, but playing a role that was not mine, a girl's role. I put that into open air. I started talking about myself. I thought that I wanted so much for other people not to go through what I've been through, for them to know that are not alone. Together with my best friend, Sasha Ikim, we started Transform, an NGO at the time specifically for trans people, and we started building and consolidating the trans community. One by one, people started to come, to show up, to say, hey, where have you been all my life? I've been waiting for you for 14 years. For a while, it was all great. I was finally living at myself. Testosterone is an amazing drug, to be honest. The community was growing and growing and becoming stronger. But four years into activism, people started to die. Laura was a trans Roma woman who was a sex worker who was stabbed to death in Rome by a client who killed her when he found out she was trans. She was living in a small village in southern Romania, sustaining her family, building them a house, saying that after she finished a house for them, she would build one for herself. She was stabbed to death. And I remember that me and my colleagues from Accept, we, start, we tried for about two weeks to raise a thousand euros to bring her dead body home to her family. And I remembered how just a few months before, I raised a thousand euros in a day to save a cat. So you see, I'm angry. I went to her funeral. All the village was there. And there's this moment that I cannot take off my mind, probably for as long as I live. She was buried in a ground at the end of the cemetery. Everybody addressing her as he, with her male name written on the cross. However, when you want to bury someone of your family who died abroad, they come in a sealed coffin. Their family wanted to open that coffin to make sure they will not bury somebody else. This is the sound of the moment when the coffee was open. Her family was kneeling on the ground with all the village there, the people in the village, some of them curious, some of them in pain. And the guy with a hammer and a sizzle started to tear down the top of the coffin. They say just open the top a bit so the mother can see. Turn it over. Stay into the mother, go at the top of the coffin to see better. Allow her to see. It's him. 
A few months later, I went back to the village to pay respects at her grave. With me came a 15-year-old trans girl from the same village as Laura, who describes Laura as both her mother and her father. She was forced to drop school. She was beaten at home for her feminine mannerism and could see no way out except sex work. She's not yet 18 and is doing now sex work in Bucharest. Two years ago, there was a couple of articles in the press of Focșani, a, uh, a city in southeastern Romania, about a woman with a beard who caught attention in Uniri Square in Focșani. I didn't read the comments because I knew I would only get angrier. However, I met her a few months later in uh, the train station in Gara de Nord. She was surrounded by a group of young men who were bullying her. She had the same smile here, but it was a bit forced. She was a bit scared. I intervened. I told them that they shouldn't perpetuate the bully that they had been experiencing as young boys. They understood and backed off. We shook hands and I left. I learned a few months later that she was found dead on the streets in Munich. These are the trans activists in Munich doing a small protest because police didn't investigate the case of a trans woman being dead. They thought if she had a beer, she couldn't probably possibly be a trans woman. She is now buried in a cemetery in Munich because her family didn't afford nor want her dead body back home. So I see how angry I am. I am angry and I express it. It's been so long since I felt anger and said all the time, I'm fine, let's continue this, let's do the work, I'm fine spreading joy and positivity while anger was growing on me. But I show it. I show anger. And I showed anger last year during Bucharest Pride. I held a speech at the end in front of 5,000 people. Here it is. Laura, Ana, te rog, Alexa. Anul trecut trimiteam un mesaj comunității, acum am nevoie de ajutorul vostru să trimitem un mesaj autorităților. Dragi autorități, au trecut aproape 30 de ani de la Revoluție și voi continua să ne omorâți. Dar o faceți mai parșiv. O faceți prin indolență, incompetență și corupție. Până când? Vedeți? Suntem tot mai mulți și avem aceleași valori. Iubire, respect, solidaritate, autenticitate, curaj. Suntem tot mai mulți și suntem peste tot. Suntem adolescenți, suntem de etnie romă, suntem persoane cu dizabilități, suntem sportivi, frizeni, maghiari, ortodoxi, săraci! Și suntem toți egali! 
Suntem lucrătoare și lucrători sexuali. Și suntem înjunghiați. Suntem militari. Suntem medici, avocați, profesori și funcționari publici. Suntem studenți, suntem musulmani, suntem orfani, suntem găsiți morți. Suntem căsătoriți, avem copii. Suntem atei, aitiști, artiști, corporatiști, bucătari, dar mergem și șapte kilometri pe jos până la școală. Suntem toți egali și avem aceleași drepturi. Așa că, dragi autorități, în loc să ne spuneți să fim mai respectabili, ați putea să vă faceți treaba. În loc să ne spuneți să mergem pe la psihiatrie, chirurgie, IML, judecătorie, iar și iar și iar, mai bine ați învăța să ne ascultați decât să ne pasați de la unii la alții, pentru că nu sunteți în stare să faceți niște proceduri simple care să ne asigure sănătatea și siguranța, mai bine ați învăța să ne ascultați și să vă faceți treaba. Nu de alta, dar suntem tot mai mulți. Și cu cât suntem mai mulți, cu atât suntem mai puternici. Dar nu-i nimic, dragi autorități. Ne vedem curând. Remember how I told you about trying to stay kind? This is my bet. In these circumstances, to continue to be kind and fair. And pay attention to everyone around me and not do any harm. This is my bet. And while doing all of this, continuing to search for myself. I wish to continue to find myself because, you know, living in a cage for 12 years leaves you a bit behind. And I feel sometimes that I'm in a race to catch up, to catch up on life while making my community resilient and strong. But there are moments where I am left alone at my home and my anger becomes my pain. It's a good thing I'm also an artist and a filmmaker because I will make a film again about myself. After finishing my, my last and first short film a few years ago, who was autobiographical and short, but a fiction film, I said to myself, never again will I do anything biographical, swear to, to God. I'm starting a feature-length documentary now <laughs> about myself and about how I will face the authorities in order to try to change my ID. You have to go to court now and bring medical evidence of your transition, bring witnesses, and let a judge decide if you are who you say you are. Sometimes sterilization is required. When I am left alone, alone in my home, there is only pain sometimes, but I film it and show it, because this is my way of healing. I admit it to myself first, and then find the courage to show it to others. Here's how. Front camera. Fucking front camera. Looking good. Când știi că știi câte ceva, fix atunci realizezi 
că nu știi de fapt decât foarte puțin. Când crezi că ai descoperit o soluție, vine viața, vine trecutul, dracu știe cine vine și îți dovedește că nu știi nimic. Și nu numai că nu știi nimic. Dar nici măcar Iar corpul meu, this is the funny part. Corpul meu nici măcar nu mai e la fel de rezistent. Simt. Nu mai... Nu mai prea poate. Îl doare în părți. And by doing that, I find some peace. It was the only thing that helped me to get up that day, putting a camera in front of me and talking to it. It took me a fair number of months to show it to anybody else. It, this is the second time I show it. The first time was in front of a group of 10 people, and now this. So I think I'm ready for my film. I have lived a life in shame. That kept me in my cage. Sometimes I feel that maybe that cage didn't disappear, it only became larger. But I am not alone anymore, at least I have my community with me and a feeling of solidarity and communion through pain is essential. So I have a message for shame. <laughs> and I have a message for fear. So will I ever find peace? Yes. Will it be hard? Sometimes. But isn't it the way it's supposed to be? Will I be at peace always? I don't think so, and that's okay. I will continue to find myself, to run towards myself, and to talk about it, to bring people together, to give them strength to talk about themselves, to stand up for themselves, to become strong, independent, and resilient. I am proud now because I see a new generation of trans people forming. They are mostly teens. They assume their identity. They are willing to talk about their identity publicly and help other people. All of this has not been in vain. So please, fuck shame, fuck fear, be your true self. Thank you.